So last week we've looked at when you add two waves up, what happens, right? You simply add them up. There are certain cases in particular that mix nice patterns, such as when you have the same frequency, same direction, you get those cases what we call constructive or destructive interference based on the difference in their phase. And then we spend a lot of time looking at the same frequency but opposite direction. That's where we get the standing wave pattern. And based on the boundary condition, we can work out how the system responds well to specific wavelength and therefore specific frequency. Very important pattern to keep track of. But this time, we're looking at what happens when you have two waves that you're adding up, but they have slightly different frequency. They can be very different, but it's more interesting when only slightly different. If they have slightly different frequency, what this means is these two waves sometimes line up, and because they're at different frequency, their peaks, they don't line up, so sometimes they would cancel. As a result, you end up making a pattern that looks like this. So excuse the uh, terrible freehand, but what it is is sometimes they add up, and sometimes they cancel out, then they add up again and they cancel out. So what you get is this kind of envelope that is sometimes loud, sometimes soft, sometimes loud, sometimes soft. Now don't confuse this for a standing wave pattern because this isn't a standing wave the whole time. All this wave is still traveling in a certain direction. But what you would hear, if this is sang in this case, you'd hear a certain underlying tone, but it gets louder and softer, louder and softer. So go whoa, 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 whoa. And that's what we call beats. It gets louder and softer. And we can talk about from one beat to the next, how long it takes, but more importantly, we can talk about the beat's frequency, which is one over this period. And as the math works out, it's super simple that the beat frequency, as we call it, is just the difference between the frequency of the two waves. And this becomes useful when it comes time to tune your instrument with each other. So in this case, we're talking about piano, but this is also true in big orchestra when everything needs to be in tune. If you've ever been to, say, a symphony concert, you will hear them at the beginning. They all play and hold a specific note. And what the musician are actually listening for is whether their instrument is making these beats with the sound made by the rest of the orchestra. That way they know if they're not in tune, if there's a difference between the note that they're playing versus everyone else. So we're told that one of these strings, either one or two, is at 260 hertz, and the other one is 1.5 hertz different from that. But of course, it's possible to be 1.5 more or 1.5 less. So the frequency of, I guess in this case, let's just randomly call it the second string, it's going to be my 260 hertz, both plus or minus 1.5 hertz, because in both cases, you will get a beats frequency of 1.5 because of the absolute value sign. So the two answer here is that. Now you might question, well, if I have two possible answer, how would I know if I'm out of tune being too high or too low? Well, as you tune it, you can find out if you're getting further away or closer to based on whether you're hearing more beats or less beats in a particular time. So this is beats, very simple, but useful nonetheless.